Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's review of The Walking Dead Season 7, Episode 5, Go-Getters. This video is a part of a series of videos where I review episodes of The Walking Dead, so I'll have to give a spoiler warning for The Walking Dead up to Season 7, Episode 5. If you haven't seen up to this point, you may not want to watch this video, otherwise some things may be spoiled for you. So those who are sick of me being harsh on The Walking Dead can relax a bit, and those who love to hear me badmouth the show may be a bit disappointed by this review because you know what, I really enjoyed this episode. It wasn't perfect by any means, but overall I was entertained by it. I've been waiting since last season to hear about uh, what happened to Hilltop and how it was affected uh, by what happened between the Alexandrians and the Saviors and uh, what the current status of Hilltop was as I was worried for a while that the show was kind of forgotten about them and wouldn't really cover it. So it was great to get some follow-up on uh, what happened to Maggie as we learned she is in fact okay, but I found it interesting that the doctor wanted to keep her at Hilltop, but Gregory was being an ass about it. So when we were first introduced to Hilltop, I was a bit surprised that their leader was such a douchebag, because Jesus seemed like a really nice guy, so I was expecting them to be more like the kingdom, with a well-liked and wise leader. I mean, Hilltop seems like a... Um, you know, prosperous enough place, so it's weird that there's such a silly, uh, slimy douchebag in charge. But this episode made it all make much more sense as they explain Jesus is uh, hardly there, as he's more of the forager type rather than the leading type, and was in fact a very resistant to the idea of becoming a leader. And it made sense how he described Gregory was already the leader when he got there, and you know, that it kind of just happened. So yeah, Gregory did prove how big of a douchebag he is first by trying to kick out uh, Sasha and Maggie and later by trying to give them up. I love the nice little touches on how he doesn't really know everyone's name and keeps getting them wrong as he keeps uh, calling Rick rich. That was a nice little touch. And that he mistook Sasha for someone who was from Hilltop. Uh, these were all nice touches that show uh, what kind of leader he really is. And of course the main theme of this episode is how the leadership in Hilltop needs to change. I also love that after he uh, graveled to the saviors and acted like a little bitch, he was actually really proud of himself and acted like he was hot shit because of it. However, as soon as the saviors uh, came and he told Maggie and Sasha to hide, I knew exactly what would happen, that he would go to give them up to the saviors, but we'd find out that they're actually hiding elsewhere. Not that I thought that that was bad or anything, I still very much enjoyed the scene, despite how predictable it was, it just seemed natural. So I was wondering how the saviors would react to the fact that Hilltop hired Rick and the others to attack them, but it never even occurred to me that they wouldn't know about it, but it makes total sense, and it's actually a wise decision story-wise, because otherwise the saviors would have to wipe out Hilltop, which wouldn't be that all that interesting. However, the saviors did suspect that something was up, because those who were killed were the ones that dealt with Hilltop, so they had to go and show them who's boss. And boy, I can't fucking stand that guy who's leading the saviors in this episode. It's funny how all of Negan's lieutenants, like this guy and the first dude that blew, uh, uh, that Daryl blew up with the rocket launcher, all act kind of like Negan, and they have that same, you know, smiley, smart-ass attitude. But anyway, it's probably a good thing that this guy is such a despicable ass because it will make it so much more satisfying when he's killed and I really hope this happens in this half season. Oh, I know that Negan won't die, but I, in, at least in this half season, but I really hope that he does and I think it is possible. So it's beyond obvious uh, in that this episode uh, was being about Maggie, you know, setting her up to be the new leader of Hilltop. Uh, not that that was a bad thing in any way. I thought it was awesome. Like, when the zombie attack occurred, not uh, only to see Maggie be a badass and crush walkers with the tractor, but also the way she ordered the people of Hilltop around and how quickly and easily they responded to her made it clear that they're setting up Maggie to be the next leader 
of Hilltop, and that sounds awesome. And it seems like they're going to incorporate other main characters into Hilltop, like Sasha and Enid, and that too sounds great. I uh, do get what they're setting up for this season by having several different colonies or towns and showing their interrelations and politics. Uh, a lot of people compare this to like Game of Thrones, and I'll be honest, when I first heard about this show, uh, that's what I thought it would be. I was actually surprised when it was just about one group wandering uh, through the zombie apocalypse. I thought it would be about like several towns set up in this uh, apocalypse, and it seems like that is what they're working towards now, and I do think it could be really awesome. But at the same time, I stand by my stance, firmly stand by my stance, that this season so far has been well, subpar to say the least. But I am hopeful that it will get better and it certainly does have that potential. I also appreciated the way this episode handled the aftermath of Glenn and Abraham's death by showing the two people most affected by it in the way that they were handling it. I like the line where Jesus says that uh, they don't need things to remember the dead, that they have each other. And it's touching how Maggie echoes this at the end of the episode. And also seeing Enid uh, put the balloons on what she thought was Glenn's grave was a nice callback to last season where Glenn saved her and he used the balloons to, uh, to scare away the walkers. And, you know, he got her to appreciate life again. She is is still very uh, thankful for that. It was a really nicely handled. But speaking of Enid, we also had to get to the side plot with Carl and Enid going to Hilltop, and I had mixed feelings about it. On the one hand, it was a bit, you know, cheesy and cliche, but on the other hand, it was a bit touching. I like how they uh, chose a tortured soul for Carl's love interest rather than the cliche hot popular girl. Enid is quite an interesting character and the type of character you would expect to see in a zombie apocalypse and seeing her transformation to becoming okay and how she appreciates Maggie for all she's done was very nicely handled. And yes, I did ultimately enjoy her relationship with Carl. Again, I'm not sure how I feel about the thing about him going after Negan. Seems a bit silly to me, but I'll wait and see where they go with it. So my rating for Go-Getters out of 10 is a 7 very good. And as this rating suggests, it is my favorite episode of the season so far, and uh, it does finally get me to think that this season may end up being good after all. However, this episode wasn't perfect, as although it was interesting, it wasn't like totally fantastic, and the Carl and Enid stuff was a, you know, a tad bit fillery and a little bit cheeseball. But overall, this was a fascinating episode that, unlike the other episodes, it wasn't contrived or boring or outrageous outrageously predictable, it does provide me with the hope that the season could get better, but we'll wait and see. So that's it for my review of Go-Getters. Be sure to keep an eye out on my channel as I continue to review episodes of The Walking Dead, and also I do many more videos on shows like Game of Thrones, Star Trek, Humans, and more, so be sure to subscribe so you can keep up with all that, and thanks a lot for watching.